Hi all, Retro Tech Chris here again. Recently, I acquired a Tandy 3-in-1 version 2 card that you see on the left there. This card is for use in a Tandy 1000 HX or EX. So what I wanted to do today is compare the three different solutions that I'm aware of for upgrading the Tandy 1000 HX or EX. We had the 3-in-1 V2 on the left, the stack of cards here in the middle that we see, and the Tandy 3-in-1 original here on the right. We'll be comparing these today. We'll go ahead and start out with the Tandy 3-in-1 V2 card that you see me showing here. It's a beautiful card. And if we look at the expansion and ports, we have an LPT2 port for parallel devices, a compact flash port, and we also have two serial ports that you see at the bottom there. Very capable card. And here's the Git repository that corresponds to this card. This is a creation by Robert Kronicki. And here you can see all of the prerequisites, installation, technical details, and assembly notes. If you want to build a card like this for yourself, as well as the bill of materials, which is all laid out here very nicely, and some discussions on the BIOS and CFIDE adapter and the support Discord. This is a great Discord channel if you want to join it to learn more about this card. Now let's have a look at the original Tandy 3-in-1 card, also a very nice looking card, as you can see here. And as we look at the expansion, you can see there's one serial as well as compact flash for this card. And this card also has a Git repository. There's a place for BIOSes for both the 8088 and V20 variants if you want to load a V20 variant. There's also a disk image here that you can see for loading a 360 or 720 kilobyte disk image. And a series of drivers, both the original card and the V2 card have upper memory. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Now something I've elected to do is actually upgrade my XT IDE BIOS to the latest version. If you have an 8088 CPU in your HX or EX, you want to use this IDE XT bin file. And if you have a V20, you want to use this IDE XTP or plus file to upgrade your system. Digging into the 720K disk image, we can see there's a DOS Max folder complete with utilities for accessing that upper memory on the cards, as well as a mouse driver, and also some startup files for autoexec bat and config sys. And if we go back to the root of the folder, there is an install.bat file that can be run, which will set up a CF card for you for use with your 3-in-1 card. The next solution is what I call the stack of cards. And this is a little bit clunky, but it gets the job done. You can see that nice monotech card on the top there. And as far as expansion, you can see the different ports here. We have a parallel port. We also have two serial ports, all from that SIG IO card that you see there. And we have a Monotech XTCF mini card that you see up top there. And these particular cards are held together into the Berg connectors that are standard in the 1000HX or EX, along with some Berg to ISA adapters, or plus to ISA adapter cards as they're called, so that we can connect everything up. There you can see the SIG IO card on the left, followed by the Tandy 1000EX expansion card for memory there in the center, and then the Monotech XTCF on the right. Here we can see the installation bay, and I'm going to go ahead and put the 3-in-1 V2 card into the system. So we'll go ahead and get that seated there and snapped in. Pretty easy to install. As for connectivity, you need a screw and a nut. I found these AT standoffs to be actually perfect for installing the card. Two on the left that you see there, and there'll be one on the right that I install as well. As we pan around here, we'll be able to see it. But first, let's put the slot cover back on, piece of cake to get that slid back on there. And here you can see where I installed the three screws and how the card looks installed in the machine. Very elegant. So next up, let's hook up some expansion devices as well as video. I'm using an RGB to HDMI to connect to my HDMI monitor. We'll go ahead and hook the mouse into one of the serial ports as well. And last, we'll hook my Zircom Pocket Ethernet adapter into the top I've actually flipped around the LPT connector since it's just an IDC cable so that I can easily install and see the status lights of my Zircom Pocket Ethernet adapter. So with the hardware installed, let's go ahead and power the system on and have a look at the software. So what we're going to do first is boot into my DOS 6.22 boot menu that you'll see here in just a second. And I'm going to choose DOS with LAN Manager. Later on, we'll explore DOS with Packet Driver so we can look at upper memory 
For whatever reason, upper memory does not seem to work with LAN Manager. There you can see the pocket ethernet adapter got initialized on LPT2, so that worked out great. And the mouse driver also got installed, so everything seems to be working just great. And before long, we're on the network. Here I am in Deskmate, you can see me moving the mouse around and that seems to be working just great, so thumbs up there. Next, we'll have a look at how that upper memory is used. You can see five lines here in config sys that I copied from Robert Kronicki's sample config.sys file. Basically clearing and setting up upper memory as well as DOS max and loading the shell command com into high memory area. We can also look at auto exec bat where I've taken the packet driver associated with that Zircom card and loaded it high. So we're doing everything we can to preserve conventional memory. So let's go ahead and reboot and load the packet driver configuration. You'll see the clear memoran, use UMB's ran, as well as the DOS max, sys and exe and shell max. The mouse driver loaded and the packet driver loaded. So with everything loaded, we should go and have a look at memory. So let's do a memory slash C slash P and look at just how much stuff is in upper memory. This is really great. Most conventional memory is actually free at this point. Look at that. Only 14 kilobytes of conventional memory is used. That's spectacular. Next, let's do a quick hard drive benchmark just for fun. And we can see this here is quite performant. It's a high performance hard drive according to Check It. So let's talk briefly about the three different configurations I offered today. First was the stack of cards, then the Tandy 3-in-1, then the Tandy 3-in-1 V2. As far as Serial 1 is concerned, all three cards do support having a serial port. And then for the stack of cards and the Tandy 3-in-1 V2, you also get a second serial port. With the stack of cards and the 3-in-1 V2, you also get a parallel port, which is quite nice. As far as external CF card access is concerned, for the stack of cards, you actually have to pop the lid on your EX or HX. However, the 3-in-1 cards allow you to put that CF card conveniently into the back. For upper memory, the 3-in-1 cards also support it, whereas the stack of cards does not. And for ease of installation, well, the stack of cards was a little clunky. It took some bending of brackets and putting special screw holes in, whereas the 3-in-1 card and 3-in-1 V2 install nice and cleanly and are easy to fasten. So if you're looking to have everything and you have certain requirements where you wanna have that second serial port and parallel port, I highly recommend you go with the Tandy 3-in-1 V2. It's a great card. Thanks for watching.